के साथ ही All right, hello everyone. Welcome and thank you for attending today's webinar. My name is Ashley Limbers and I'm the marketing lead here at Encompass Solutions. At Encompass, we partner with organizations like yours to help simplify business and maximize ROI with solutions that can connect your operations and reduce time consuming work around streamlining every part of your business. Today, we are discussing how Epicor manages multi-site and multi-company environments. Presented by Leslie Kendall, our business business analyst. Just a few things before we get started. Today's webinar is being recorded and a copy of the recording will be emailed to you. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type it, them into the question box and your Zoom control panel. We will bring them up during our Q&A session in between the sections of our presentation. We also encourage you to take the survey after today's event. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to Leslie. Leslie Kendall has worked with ERP systems in manufacturing, distribution, and healthcare for more than 25 years. Leslie's Epicor experience includes education and implementation experience with the posting engine, multiple books, multiple facilities, project billing, international impl implications, AFR, and customizing the post rules that are the backbone of the Epicor system. Additionally, she was the project manager and financial lead on various multi-site implementations. Leslie, over to you. Good morning, everyone. As uh, Ashley is talking about, we're going to talk about both multi-site and multi-company. In Epicor, they are two, two different uh, processes. So, and this is how, and we will be doing multi-site first. So we're going to start here with the poll questions that we're going to ask you to take a look at as we get involved. And if you can answer these for us, we will uh, take a look here shortly. Yep. So on a scale of one to five, how would you rate the effectiveness of your current multi-company management strategies and your manufacturing company? One through five, one being very ineffective and five being very effective. Question number two, which of the following multi-company management tools or software do you currently use in your manufacturing company? So ERP system, CRM software, project management software, or other. And then the third question is, what are the main challenges you face in managing multiple companies within your manufacturing business? Select all of these that apply to you, communication barriers, resource allocation, synchronization of operations and data management and integration or other. And these polls are completely anonymous. So please feel free to check your answers and we'll go over these shortly. We'll give you about 20 seconds um, and then we'll go over them. All right, so Leslie, if you want to go over the results. I am not seeing the questions. Oh, okay. I can go over them quickly. So it looks like for the first question, um, let's see, 60%. Um, say that they're in the middle of the road with a three, we've got um, four and also one. So it goes from very ineffective to pretty effective. Um, and then on our second question, which of the following multi-company management tools or software do you currently use in your manufacturing company? It looks like most everyone uses ERP systems and CRM software. Um, and then lastly, this is all over the board. So it looks like a lot of the challenges that the audience faces is communication barriers, um, synchronization of operations, data management integration being the number one um, challenge. And then it looks like there are some other challenges as well. So, all right, Leslie, you can continue. Okay.
Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is multi-site. And multi-site in Epicor, or a multi-site would, I'm sorry, not in Epicor, but multi-site means primarily in this instance, do you operate in numer in various locations? Do you have more than one manufacturing site? Do you have distribution centers? Do you have storage warehouses that all that you would need to keep track of? So does your business operate in multiple physical locations? That's the first thing to consider for a multi-site. And if it does, how do you categorize these sites locations? Do you track them um, separately, together? Do you have a need to? Do you transfer stock between sites and locations? And are there distinct cost structures needed at each site or location? Those are the questions to ponder. Do you track costs, profits, and expenses across multiple sites? And if accuracy or ne is necessary, if necessary, can you distinguish transactions or or originating from different locations? Do you even need to? That would be another question to ponder. Some of the common approaches to multi-site or multi-plant, you can think of them as either one, is they would resort to separate accounting systems in each location. And these locations can be, again, distribution centers, manufacturing plants, simple storage units. I've also seen warehouses done, although warehouse and a site might be a little bit something to discuss. And how do you manage? If, if ma managing multi-sites is an issue for you, then what are your issues? Those would be our questions we're going to talk about. Manual and a lot of a, a number of people I have discovered when they are saying, well, we just manually keep track of them separately and then combine them in the end. That can be one of the major problems is the errors coming to it. Epicor solution. One of the most pri the primary things for Epicor in their uh, multi-site management is a total separation of responsibilities. And when I say separate total separation, you can separate your users, your sites, your inventory, your manufacturing, your MRP runs. You can have a complete 100% comprehensive separation at the profit and loss inventory and cost point level. It also allows for central or decentral sales order processing. In other words, you could have a centralized uh, um, customer service center that said, okay, they call in an order, a, some, a customer calls in an order and the it's taken at one site, but the sales order is flagged to be shipped from another site. And then Epicor, the Epicor solution then would track and give sales credit, inventory relief, cost of goods sold to that individual site. You have the option in multi-site to separate your accounts payable and accounts receivable. While that is not uh, 100%, it, it can't the general ledger and the financials can be expanded to separate. The separation point in Epicor would be the balance sheet versus the P&L. A P&L can is separated by site where the balance sheet is works more at the company level And as I said earlier, it facilitates cross-site sales order entries, cross-site purchasing, um, and all, all operational or logistical or manufacturing points are separated by site. And on Epicor's menu, and the menus you'll see here is a tree view, this is how it works. 
your company is at the top of this is here at the top and then each site has its own set of operational menus the way and, and they're easily separated by the user because if you have a user that would be in a chicago site they would never see the greensboro site that would not be part of their security you can make that either separate or together one of the really nice things what you're showing here is the setup of sites at a sales order entry and here because it down here you'll tell it its site and its warehouse over here we'll talk about these are the types of things all of the, the processes in Epicor that can be separated if you'll notice inventory you can separate inventory by site into its own shipping locations time and expense if you track that can be separated by site production, maintenance, shipping and receiving. If you have a field services, it can also be separated by site. You can share warehouses or not. One of the, a good process in, in uh, Epicor with it is their transfer ability. You can transfer inventory between sites without any cost you can also you can track it, you can remove it from inventory, put it in transit, send it to another site and back and forth without any additional effort on the part of it that doesn't do any costing and, and or anything like that. It doesn't come up with anything else. You can do separate cycle counts by site. Questions? So we'll give you a minute um, to go ahead and type any questions that you have on the first section of multi-site. Um, let me see here. Okay, so it says, how does Epicor, so our first question is, how does Epicor handle inventory management across multiple sites or companies? Inventory is tracked by site. Because as in Epicor, again, as you saw on the screen, there was possibility here of two separate sites. And everything in Epicor up to, of all modules, up through production, inventory, material management, shipping and receiving, all track at the site level. It is identified and kept separate. And it can be kept as separate as you want. You can keep it separate up to and including in the general ledger. But each site would have its has its own warehouses, so you would have to physically, or using a transaction, pull inventory from one site and physically move it to another, and the system would take care of moving it within the system transactions. It's called transfer, inventory transfer between sites. Great. That was a good question. Um, our next question is, how would Epicor handle a centralized ordering system? distributing orders by site based on inventory or resource availability. Do you want me to read that again? <laughs> How would Epicor handle a centralized ordering system distributing orders by site based on inventory or resource availability? In, I'm trying to think of the pieces that would do it. In Epicor, when you're doing a sales order entry, your inventory, your available inventory would show up. And if we back up here, if you'll notice here, this is a sales order entry. And they would know, they would put in the site and within that site, because if the site has separate, uh, more than one warehouse, you put in the site first and then only those uh, sites, only those warehouses within that site would show up here and then you would they, it would give you your available inventory on hand inventory, et cetera. If you fill in a search and that, that this happens across the board, you could be in again here, the Greensboro site, create a sales order, put in the Chicago site warehouses, it would show you what was available in 
Chicago. Is that the answer? That is that answer the question? Seems like it did. I'll let you know if okay. there's another question. It looks like we've covered all the questions for this section. Okay. That is site. And it can be a little, like I said, you can think of site in ver in uh, um, site is can also be known as a plant. You'll hear it in Epicor speak. A lot of times people talk about plants. And um, the, the last thing I want to talk about sites is it can be a plant, a manufacturing plant, a distribution center. It's how do you want a primary, of course, I'm with finance a lot. And I also know that manufacturing, it's what transactions, a site depends on what transactions you want to separate. And you can set up a site if it's important enough and you can set up everything up to the general ledger to track that site. Okay. Multi-company. Right. Do you wanna do the, do we wanna go ahead and do the poll question oh, for multi-company? Yes. Perfect. Yes. All right. So. We'll go ahead and go launch our next set of poll questions. Just a reminder, these are anonymous. What, uh, what is the primary motivation for implementing or wanting to implement multi-site management in your manufacturing company? So cost reduction and efficiency improvement, expanding market reach and customer base, regulatory compliance and risk mitigation or other. Which of the following challenges do you consider most critical in multi-site management? Standardizing processes and workflows across sites, ensuring consistent quality control and product standards, managing logistics and supply chain complexities, communication and collaboration between sites or all of the above. And then last question, what technology tools or platforms are you currently using? ERP system, MES, cloud-based collaboration tools, QuickBook, or we are not using specific tools. We'll give you about 20 seconds to go ahead and continue to answer those poll questions, and then we'll share the results. All right, so starting with the first question, what is the primary motivation for implementing or wanting to implement multi-site management in your manufacturing company? Results show that cost reduction and efficiency improvement is the number one reason um, for implementing. And then uh, it looks like the second number, um, the second most popular answer was other reasons. Um, so the second question, which of the following challenges do you consider most critical in multi-site management? Um, the number one answer, 50% of you um, show standardizing processes and workflows across sites, uh, with 30%, 33% of saying all of these reasons are challenges, and then communication and collaboration between sites, about 17%. And then last question, what technology tools or platforms are you currently using? 67% said ERP. Um, looks like 17%, we have a tie between the number the number two answer with manufacturing execution system and QuickBooks. So thank you for um, participating in these polls. And Leslie, you can continue. Okay. Well, I actually agree with the answers to the poll, uh, especially in the cost reduction and efficiency improvement, because with cost, cost reduction is very easy that you don't duplicate effort, um, which also goes into efficiency. And standardizing process and workflows, again, is efficient and reduces cost. And the ability to communicate and collaborate between sites basically work well here. So, hey, multi-company. You'll see in Epicor, when, when we talk about multi-company here, is different. Multi-company's first process is you're a multi-company if your two entities are legal entities. And a legal entity is usually distinguished by it has its own federal tax ID. 
And that is the backbone of why you would do a multi-company. That's the first question that any, I ask anybody when I'm doing it. Do you have, and they say, I don't know what I want to do. Does it have its own federal tax ID? Then you're into a multi-company. If, if the answer is yes, you're into a multi-company situation. Challenges in multi-company, again, like we said, is to track and manage costs, profits, and expenses across various legal entities. Separate transactions for efficiency so you know what's happening in each entity. It also can be very helpful with forecasting tools for forecasting, planning, and develop development efficiencies of each entity. One of the com most common conventional approach, obviously, is to maintain separate accounting and operational systems, which can be followed by consolidation of final figures. I'm sure all of you have to do that in some form if you're operating in, uh, with two different companies on reporting as one. At some point, you do have to consolidate them. Hmm. Without an ERP system, which I was glad to see, most everybody's there is using an ERP system, and because because the process is separated or even without an ERP system, can be time consuming and again susceptible to errors. Epicores. One of the biggest advantages in Epicor is that it enables immediately when you turn on multi-company and get the setup done, it enables the seamless interaction of intercompany inter processing. And it provides the, and Epicor provides the flexibility of either centralized or decentralized setup. You can do the tracking, you can do the processing individually at each company, or in many, most cases, you can do it as one in a consolidated method. We'll get a little bit more into there later. And it also at the finance level, it provides intercompany settlement separate from the AR and AP trade, the sales, the revenue, et cetera. You can, it, it can be set up to um, do an, a very good job of eliminations and settlement between AR between entities. One of its Epicor's best is its ability to do multi-company journals. You can have that's the centralized control of the general ledger if you need to. And it also has a very streamlined view of being able to consolidate companies, the general ledger of each company into one general ledger. What I'm show, going to show here I get to show you what the mostly what the multi-company processes are for Epicor. This is what you're seeing would be the Epicor setup of a multi-company, <clears throat> if, if someone in a multi-company situation. And basically, these are in here that creates relationships individually. If you had two companies, you set up a relationship between the two companies. Um, if you'll notice here, this says ESI two, and we are I'm in what the uh, it's taken from a company called ESI. So this is the relationship between setting up that says ESI and ESI two can do the following functions together. You can share across AP invoice discount. You can send sales order acknowledgments across company between the two companies. What I've enabled here is probably one of the biggest functions of, of Epicor's multi-company. It's called intercompany trading. Basically, with this function, you could raise a purchase order, an inter what's called an intercompany purchase order, in company two to company one. You're saying, I want to buy from company one the following processes. The system would automatically then go across 
and send a um, the purchase order into the sales order system of company one where it can be processed as a normal shipment of, of goods, which when they come back, they are received in. And this process goes all the way into accounts receivable and accounts payable because it would, on company one side, it would raise the accounts receivable invoice. And on company two side, it would raise the accounts payable invoice all available to be offset in whatever way your company chooses. And I've seen people say, no, I just want to offset the uh, intercompany balances. Okay, we can do that. I actually have some companies who say, no, I'm going to send, we still send them a check and keep their, tra their separate. It can do that because it raises everything up to and including the invoices in an intercompany. And that's what intercompany trading. Over here on the right, you'll see all the possible things that can send it. This is the function called in Epicor called global. In Epicor, you have the ability in a global function of sharing and controlling the data you want for customers, suppliers, parts. Um, and you can sub, you'll notice you can set share a cust you can show it down to the suspect level if you into your uh, customer resource or your CRM customer relationships. The global is very handy in that you can it the most the control of it is you don't want mo duplicate part numbers you want one part number across your company. You don't want each company saying, well, this is the same part, but it's got a different part number. So you can control the part number and maybe the description. Or you can say, oh, I want everybody to use the same product group for their parts. So you're going to control the part. You get to choose what fields in each company are controlled versus what do you allow each company to handle for themselves. Um, in some cases, the best example would be customers or suppliers. You have negotiated different um, terms with each customer or supplier in different locations because of any reason, because of site, distance, et cetera. It can be net 30, net 20, whatever. You, <clears throat> excuse me, you can say, okay, each site can, ha can negotiate their own terms code. Or no, we have to have the same terms across for each customer location, et cetera. So that's what you're trying to tell it here. Another down here, it gives shell shows you that in Epicor, the configurator, which is tied to custom processing uh, each part for an order, that can be multi-company also. So these all represent the various things that Epicor will allow control of. It also allows, if you're sharing customers, you can share what's called global credit. In other words, a major customer can have one large credit that says um, each, each of their locations are such to get a certain amount of credit. And they you can look at everybody else's credit to either allow more credit or stop more credit. So global credit is also global in Epicor is quite powerful in what it can do. One of the things I like the best about it is you can stop what you don't want it to do. It's all a user choice because this is the setup you choose when you do it. Second part here of global setup. If you'll notice here, it says central payment and consolidated purchasing. One of the, a very powerful piece of multi-company in Epicor is the ability to um, take advantage of, of uh, order levels. You can say, have a central purchasing department that says, I'm going to order the following 1,000 and I need 250 delivered to this company, a 250 to that company. You can take advantage of that and you can do a consolidated purchasing that would then tell the vendor to send it across to various companies. And each company would then be informed of this purchasing coming in. Central payment is that each 
company could receive their own vendor invoices, approve them and say it's okay, and it's sent to the parent company or your, the company of your choice, the control, to be one, one payment to one vendor. The system will then turn around and basically send the AP invoice up to the company, the, the parent company, and they once the parent company pays it, it then sends a note back to the uh, child company and says it's paid and it gives the dates and everything. The same thing can happen down here on central collection. This is the AR side of it, it will do both. The last piece of that is in the center here is if you want, Epicor will handle multiple general ledger charts of accounts across company. In other words, each company could have their own chart of accounts or you can say, no, I want to control the chart of accounts global. In Epicor for security reasons, you didn't see on the part over here, uh, whoops, sorry, where we were controlling the customers and parts. In Epicor, the general ledger has its own set of security, so it is separated from most everything else. Um, so you don't, it doesn't make itself part of the uh, standard global, it, you, sep you choose these separately. You can allow in Epicor, again, in multi-companies, you can do central, when you do uh, accounts payable, you have a vendor, example would be an insurance vend uh, invoice. You um, can allow it to say, okay, I want to do a multi-company journal on my accounts payable invoice, and I want to break it down and I want it to go to two different companies. I want the expense to be recorded in two different companies. So it will allow general manual journals and general ledger to be multi-company and it will allow them to be multi-company in accounts payable. And it's very extensive. The last piece of it would be, we didn't have a chance to, or, a uh, way to put it here, but you can take a general ledger in Epicor, a multi-company journal or multi-company chart of accounts, and you can consolidate them into a holding company. If you had two, three companies, you can combine them in a consolidation effort at the end of every period. Um, each company closes its period and then says, here, I'm going to send the uh, transact the general ledger transactions for this period up to a holding company and it forms a general ledger with containing all the companies. In Epicor, the way, the backbone of the way Epicor does it is every single transaction in Epicor contains the company code. So every record of every table identifies the uh, company code of the uh, company it's coming from. So no matter where you move it, what you do with it, it always knows its source company, consolidated or not. Questions? Right, so if you have a question, um, just go ahead and type that into the Q&A box in your control panel. Um, and it looks like we already have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, can each site or company have its own set of users and access controls within the Epicor system? Yes. Access to a company or a site, um, by, uh, access in Epicor is called user security, and each user is given separately access. It says they can access one, two, three sites, one site, one company, two companies. So it is set up that so that each user is limited to what control is given them. Um, next question. Is it possible to consolidate financial and reporting for multiple companies with Epicor? It is possible, as I said, consolidate general ledgers. Reporting wise, again, Epicor uh, identifies every record with a company. So there can be, uh, it can be identified by company through BAQs, it can, but uh, business queries, you can do that with reporting, et cetera, because every single transaction carries its company code. Okay. 
So you can choose how you want to do it. And many of the reporting tools already say, okay, give me a company or give me to these two companies, et cetera. So yes. Okay. And it looks like our last question that we have is, and I think you might have touched on this, can Epicor facilitate and our company transactions and transfers between sites or companies? Yes. It's one of its uh, primary functions in the multi-company environment um, is the fact that you can automatically trade between them. And one of the features of being able to trade between them also is allows costing differences or costing the same, depending on what you want to set up. A piece we didn't get into here, which is a third piece and happens a lot to people, is in a multinational environment and uh, multi-currency. Epicor handles that also through its multi, uh, has the ability to handle it and make currency exchanges through multiple to multiple currencies. All right, great question. So it looks like we've covered all the questions. Um, as we go over the last couple of slides, if you have any additional questions, uh, we would like to answer those. So please feel free to submit them into the Q&A box. Um, go ahead, Leslie. Um, it, it's, a, it's a metal tank fabrication company. And this is what they're after. They can leverage multi-site functionality to support various companies and develop various companies. And they employ a suite of add-on tools for reporting and data warehousing. And that's a very large feature for them. The data warehousing is comes under the heading of the question we were asking about reporting on it. And it just allows them with data warehousing to develop reports again that say, I wanna see this company. No, I wanna see this co uh, one company compared to another company. And you're able to do forecasting and that type of thing with reporting. Development, the uh, Epicor financial planning and analysis is quite a powerful tool, separate module that allows you again to do these, um, a lot of data, it's a form of a data warehousing that allows you to be forecasting, budgeting based on comparisons to companies, et cetera. So the financial planning and analysis for advanced reporting is quite a powerful tool to use in a multi-company environment. And we have implemented many times, they, and they use Docstar to send workflows. These cotton uh, non-wovens, they created several, they use subsidiary, they use it for the subsidiary uh, situation where they have uh, the rolls up to one company. And there, there is uh, basically one of their big things is to get every time they they do a new startup, they can can start easily start up a new company because Epicor would support. Uh, my experience is a company that has the largest experience I have with it is they have twenty one companies in four countries, all in the same Epicor environment, all tracked separately and consolidated together. The boating company. And again, they add new, one of the biggest things is separating, keeping it separate and combined, combining where they choose to. And they especially down here, I'd like to, their use of, of uh, the Commerce Connect um, for online because it again can be, it is de designed to call up a certain location for them. Epicor is its purpose is manufacturing, that's its focus. And it is a mid-market software with a very robust supply chain. 
And it is, I've seen it as scalable down as far and as an easy transfer from QuickBooks from beginning and startup and maintaining as once it's set up with the scalability and ability, it is uh, adaptability is quite good. Hey, Leslie, we did have a question come through. Okay. Um, if a customer order needs to be transferred from one site to another, is there a process for that or does the site field just need to be changed on the sales order? The site field could be at different points. Obviously, it depends on the point at which it is a sales order in the process. But yes, you can just you can change the, the site and say, I want it to go here instead. It is doable. Again, with the limitation of where, in the, obviously, if it's in the shipping process, there's going to be some intervention to stop it. But yes, once you back it off, it can be just changed on the sales order. Okay, great. Thank you. And just a reminder, uh, yep, please type your uh, questions if you have any um, before we conclude this webinar. Um, and I can go over this slide. Yes, Leslie. please. We do have a resource for you, and you can scan the QR code. Uh, it's a multi-site management fact sheet. Um, from Epicor, it goes into the details. It's a two-pager document of um, all about multi-site. Um, so the first QR code, you can download the fact sheet. And then if you're interested in taking the next step and um, we would like to schedule a discovery call, you can um, click, or I'm sorry, scan the next QR code for that. Um, and you can speak with our team. And if you will go ahead and transition to the next slide. Um, it looks like we have covered all of our questions. Leslie, is there anything else you wanted to cover before we go today? Uh, not really, um, other than the fact that, yes, it's worth, it is worth looking into. It is a, quite a, an extensive, uh, they have, Epicor has quite an extensive uh, offering in the transaction area. My favorite, obviously, from an accounting standpoint is the ability to each controller, each location, each country in each country handling their own uh, statutory requirements, their own uh, financial requirements, and then finding one of several ways of uploading it and consolidating it to help the people at corporate have a uh, consolidated view. Great. Thank you so much, Leslie. Okay. Um, Thank you, everyone. And if you would like to reach out to us, you can email us at sales at incumbent-inc.com or visit our website at www.encompass-inc.com. Um, and our telephone number is there as well. Um, thank you. We appreciate you being here with us today. Um, we did put in the chat a link to our upcoming event, Introducing Epicor Financial Planning and Analysis for, for Manufacturing. This is the new Epicor Financial Planning Analysis. Um, so Epicor, the Global Epicor FMP, um, but FPNA, sorry, um, yeah. product <laughs> owner <laughs> will be joining us on that webinar. So we will be introducing Epicor FPNA, going over the common financial challenges, the benefits of using Epicor FPNA, and then also you will get to see a live demo. So please register for that. Um, thanks again for joining us, and we'll see everyone next time.